Welcome. Here's just a little thought. Many people like to define i as the square root of negative 1. So as an imaginary number, there is no number that multiplies by itself to give an answer negative 1. So people say, okay, let's imagine there's one that does this property and let's play with it. Uh, there are very good historical reasons for this, and it turns out complex numbers are incredibly useful. Um, in fact, they're talked about uh, in chapter 18, I believe it is, a volume 2 of the series. Um, in fact, there's a very nice introduction there what how to get going with complex numbers for students in the first place. Uh, but for, let me just pick on one little point here. This statement that i is the square root of negative 1 is actually incorrect. Let me explain why. If you wish to say that i is the square root of negative 1, then let's play the following game. 1 would have to be the square root of 1, no doubt about that. And we can write 1 as negative 1 times negative 1. Well, the square root of a product is the product of the square root, so this is the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1, which is, by this definition, if you're going to go with it, has to be i times i, and i times i is negative 1. So according to this, this erroneous definition, if you choose to accept it, then you must now say that 1 is the same as negative 1. What's going on? Well, the problem is the definition of i has to be as follows. i is a number with the property that i squared is negative 1. That's the definition. From that, it follows that the square root of negative 1 is actually two possible values plus or minus i. So you cannot define i to be the square root of negative 1 because what's really going on is negative 1 has two square roots. We need that at play. And i made use of that here in this little equation. If you look closely, this is fine. This is fine. And now we're getting a little bit strange, but that's actually fine. But what's going on here is it's either plus or minus i, plus or minus i. There's ambiguity right there. And it turns out, if I stuck with plus i plus i, I'm, getting, I'm playing with the ambiguity in the wrong way. I get negative 1. So all I really can conclude from this argument is that 1 equals plus or minus negative 1. And I can't argue with that. It turns out it's minus minus 1. So this is the true definition of i. And as I mentioned, if you want a good motivation for that, have a look at chapter 18 of this book. But please, 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 please don't tell your students the square root of negative one, uh, negative one is i. Just not right. Thank you.